So Huawei has a new flagship phone. It's got a big screen, slick design, fast performance, yada yada yada. But let's get to the chase here. These phones are special almost exclusively because of their unique photographic prowess. This is the Huawei P30 Pro along with its little brother the regular P30, and it stands a good chance of being the best and most versatile phone camera of 2019. Take a sec to subscribe so you don't miss our full review coming soon, and we'll jump in. Let's get some hardware basics out of the way before we indulge in the really good stuff. The Huawei P30 Pro builds on the foundations of the Mate 20 Pro with a 6.47 inch curved OLED display with curved glass on either side in a trifecta of brilliant iridescent hues. There's Breathing Crystal, which I'm using here, a sort of pearlescent sky blue, along with Aurora that we know from the P20 and a hot new sunset red colour. The whole package is powered by Huawei's Kirin 980 processor, now with a base of 8GB of RAM for the Pro and 6 for the regular P30. So compared to the Mate 20 Pro, there's a bigger screen this year and a much smaller notch, as Huawei goes for a dewdrop cutout shape instead of an S10 style hull punch. The need to eliminate ever more stuff from the front face of the phone means the P30 Pro also uses a new in-display speaker system that vibrates the screen itself to play back core audio, and that's now entirely separate from the bottom firing loudspeaker which is used in music and videos. The other main specs are similarly impressive, IP68 water resistance, or IP53 splash resistance for the regular P30, and in the Pro a 4200mAh battery plus 40W supercharging plus wireless charging plus reverse wireless charging, matching everything the Mate 20 Pro could do in that area. Alright, now that's out of the way, it's time to discuss the star attraction. The P30 Pro's quad Leica camera setup is something I'm genuinely excited by. The 40 megapixel main sensor has been completely re-engineered, Huawei now calls this a super spectrum sensor. It replaces the red, green and blue subpixels that make up each individual pixel with a new red, yellow, yellow, blue setup, which Huawei says can draw in more light. And in addition, the main camera also gets upgraded with an f1.6 aperture and optical image stabilization. Huawei's handheld long exposure night mode is back too, and without drawing any premature conclusions, chances are this will be an exceptional low light camera. Better than the Pixel 3? We'll just have to wait and see, but just the fact that that's in contention is exciting. The P30 also boasts an impressive wide angle camera system which on paper matches the Mate 20s, 20 megapixels behind an f2.2 lens. Plus, there's a new time of flight sensor hiding in the second camera cluster there. Similar to the Honor View 20, this is a new kind of sensor for more accurate depth detection in portrait shots. But it's the fourth camera that might turn out to be the jewel in the P30 Pro's crown. This is the new 5x optical zoom camera, and this 125mm lens uses an internal periscope structure. Most of the lenses involved here actually live inside the phone off at a right angle, and that's because arranging these lenses in the normal way would either result in a ginormous camera bump or just make the phone too thick to use. In hybrid zoom mode, combining input from the main sensor with the telephoto, you can go all the way up to 10 times without losing any detail. To see this level of true telephoto zoom in a phone you'll be able to buy in the next few weeks is pretty wild. And these are only first impressions, but actual usable 10 times zoom, combined with decent depth detection thanks to that time of flight sensor, along with the versatility of a main sensor that can beat the P20 Pro and maybe even the Pixel 3 in low light, well, that's kind of a revelation. And suddenly the triple camera array of the Galaxy S10 with its 2 times telephoto zoom starts to look just a little bit pedestrian. We're barely a quarter of the way into 2019, but already we might have seen the best phone camera of the year. And Huawei also hasn't neglected the front camera, that's now been upgraded to a new 32 megapixel unit. Huawei's new AI HDR Plus system is particularly useful in selfies, though it does also work with the other cameras, both front and back. It can understand the component parts of a photo and make sure the main subject of a photo is properly exposed even in badly backlit conditions. On the software side, Huawei's EMUI interface hasn't changed a whole lot in the new version 9.1, EMUI veterans like me will notice some subtle changes like improved animations in the recents menu and a more consistent approach to icon frames in the home screen, but otherwise this is largely the same software that we saw on the Mate 20. EMUI is fine, but it's far from my favourite Android interface, it often tries to do too much and still mishandles some basic software areas like the lock screen. I'm also not clear on whether the P30's in-screen fingerprint scanner is going to replicate any of the frustrations that I had with the Mate 20 Pro. Huawei says it's using an upgraded optical sensor in the P30, but in the short time that I had with it, it still felt pretty much the same to use, i.e. a bit of a mixed bag overall and just not as good as a capacitive scanner. At least there is still face unlock, though without the infrared laser array that we saw on the Mate 20 Pro. After all, this is a phone with only a tiny display notch. 
But of course, as promising as the P30 Pro is, it's not the only phone Huawei announced today. There's also the regular P30, which once again is a little smaller and a little less trailblazing than the Pro across the board. It has a 6.1 inch flat display, a traditional earpiece, a slightly smaller though still sizeable battery, and a trim back camera experience that maxes out at 3x telephoto zoom, plus a lower spec lens for the main camera without OIS. So the core components of the P30 Pro are there, but it's clear that if you want everything that makes this phone special, you'll probably want to opt for the bigger and more expensive model. Bottom line, the Huawei P30 Pro takes the Mate 20 Pro, improves its design, tunes up the software a little bit, and supercharges the camera. That's enough for someone like me who really enjoyed the Mate 20 to get pretty excited about this phone. A big important chunk of the Western smartphone market is of course still off limits to Huawei. There's nothing these phones can do to get around that, but it does once again position a new Huawei flagship as something of a forbidden fruit. The best phone you can't buy if you're an American. Or at the very least perhaps the best pocket sized camera you can't buy. We'll find out to what extent that's true in our full review, so stay tuned and subscribe to Android Central here on YouTube. That's it for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.